she had checked the spring, still standing, when peace like a river attended my way. <laughs>
is well in Jesus' name. And I invite Venerable Naya to please come for the sound. Psalm 90. Shall be read alternately. Still standing, please. It will be read alternately. Lo, thou hast been a dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains he has brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man back to the dust, and sayest, Turn back, O children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. Thou dost sweep men away. They are like a dream, like grass which is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are consumed by the anger and wrath. We are overwhelmed. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days pass away under thy wrath. Our years come to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are three score and ten, or even by reason of strength four score. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone and will fly away. Who considers the path of thy anger and wrath according to the fear of thee? It's a video. You know, you know, do it. I tell you, I'll say, 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
See the Lord. The Lord shine the bright. We'll now invite the distinguished senator Philip Abida to please come and take the first reading. Thank you. Taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 14. And it goes thus <clears throat> There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep. A time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men. Yet they cannot fathom what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and do good while they live that everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all his toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that men will revere him. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
We shall not stand as we sing the next hymn. Still on page six. I sleep in Jesus, blessed sleep. Still standing, fading away like the stars of the morning.
Second reading is taken from the book of First Corinthians, chapters 15, verses 20 to 26, and then we'll skip to verses 50 to 58. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own turn, Christ, the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the perishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound. The dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must close itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where? O oh, death is your victory. Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always gives yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Here ends our second reading. Praise the Lord. Since today, we shall sing the hymn, 
Jesus lives. We are terrible now. <laughs> invite Mrs. Grace Beatus for third reading. The third reading is taken from the book of First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. 
according to to the Lord's own word. We tell you that who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not persuade those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with those words. May his word be blessed. Amen. Praise see the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. While standing, we shall take the next hymn. Jesus, keep me near thy cross. Please stand. then I will call Pastor 
Abue is senior pastor, Una's Chapel, Lifetime. He will say so well for two minutes. Please step forward. Thank you. And after that, we will also call the Reverend Abiodun Fatimbo, senior pastor, Commonwealth of Zion Assembly, Oza. You also come forward to say a word. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I stand this evening not just on behalf of myself and my wife, but I also stand to represent our father, Bishop David Abioye, who sent us to represent him and also to pray for family on his behalf. And our bishop would like to also, we also stand on the behalf of the Living Faith Church Life Camp Abuja here. We are here this evening to rejoice with the family and to congratulate them for the life that is well spared. Life is not a function of duration, but a function of contribution. And when you check around to find the fruit of any tree, you don't need to find out how the tree look like. The fruit speak better and clearer for the tree. What am I saying? Baba's life is well spent. And I want to use this medium to congratulate the family today. And it is my prayer that the legacy Baba has left behind shall be maintained by the entire family members in the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, as a word of prophecy ahead of the family, it is clearly said in the Bible that when the seed of a tree falls down and die, it bears more fruit. So now the Baba has departed, we expect great blessings, open doors, and great blessings upon the entire family, both the young and old, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless the entire family in Jesus' wonderful name. Thank you very much. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you so much. We now invite the Reverend Abiodun Fatimbo, the senior pastor, Commonwealth Zion Assembly, Koza, to say a word. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Such a joy to be here tonight, not to mourn, not to cry, but to celebrate a life well spent. Somebody said, a wise man said, you never see tomorrow. Yesterday, today was tomorrow. But when we stepped into today, it became today. Therefore, every single one of us are already in our today. Another wise man said, if the place before you today and tomorrow, choose tomorrow. Because today we soon go, and tomorrow it will live forever. What am I trying to say? We are all here to celebrate a life well spent because a man chose tomorrow. He didn't live for the present time. He produced results. And the product of a, of a tree explains the quality of the tree. It's eloquent. The, the, the evidence and the testimony is eloquent tonight that Baba has lived a life and produced. You could hear Senator, you could hear Ambassador. Those who didn't just serve themselves, those who didn't just live for themselves, but those who lived and also served the nation. My prayer is that all of us, that we still have time to express what God has placed on our inside, that we will express it and die empty. The most prosperous place to be sometime is the graveyard. Books that were not written, dramas that were not acted, visions that were not fructified. But we are still alive today, and my prayer is that every one of us in this place that came to celebrate a life well spent, we're going to die empty. I've poured out ourselves and poured what God has poured inside of us to bless humanity. 
I want to say great congratulations to the Aduda family and everyone that came to rejoice with them. That in the name of the Lord Jesus, we long life the Lord will satisfy us. And the rest of our lives will be the best of our lives. Thank you very much. With you. We we invite Bishop John Priest to say a word, and after that, we also invite Pastor Jerry Eze to please come forward for a word. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. We celebrate God's goodness, and I'm here this evening on behalf of the, of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, uh, Bishop Francis Waleoke, okay, our national president, and uh, serving with him as a national deputy president to uh, encourage the family and say to every member of the family that Baba has gone to rest and not too long. We will see him to part no more. The greatest joy of the believer is that we don't die, we just sleep. And just to say this, the worst thing that can happen to a believer becomes the best that happened. The worst thing that can happen to us as Christians is that we die. But then if we don't die, we don't make heaven. Because when we are he live here, we get over to the other side. So the worst thing becomes the best that happens to us. And so we want to say that um, the by and by, we'll meet with Baba to part no more. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. And we rejoice with the family for that which God has done, the life that is well lived. And I'm happy that he lived and died in the Lord. And we'll all one day join. Don't forget when you die, the number of cars you had will not be written in your biography or the houses you acquired. The only thing that will be remembered for was what was done for the Lord. So let's stop all this craze for, you know, material things on earth here and know that there is eternity waiting for us. Thank you so much and God bless you. Thank you, Lordship. Thank you, Lordship. We will now invite Pastor Jerry Eze. Please come and say a word. And after that, we invite a family. We come for a testimony. Then the church. For the Bible says that a good man, out of the treasure of his, treasures of his heart, leave it an inheritance for his children and for his children's children. And tonight and this evening, is just um, a revelation, uh, just an amplification that a lot of treasures has been left behind by the great man, by the father that has left. And tonight also is an indication that each and every one of us must be careful, like the Bible says, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And so wisdom is that which God is calling on us, that every single thing that we do today will be governed by wisdom so that indelible marks and indelible results, eloquent um, testaments of the power and the grace of God on our lives will be evident for all to see and for all to see. And for each and every one of us, we believe that like everyone has said, death is not an end, but it's just a transition to greater glory, to greater victory. And like the Bible will say, except a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abideth alone. And we believe that the death of our father is ultimately the harvest of this great family. For what God cannot do does not exist. God bless us. The Lord be with you. I didn't just want to invite the Khan chairman, Hef City, to please come and say a word. After that, we, we invite the family and distinguished senator of federal Republic of Nigeria to come after 
the Kant chairman. Thank you. Kant chairman, have city. Grace and peace to you all in Jesus' name. Death is an inevitable end, and also it reminds us of our mortality. Um, we bring words of comfort on behalf of Cam President, the entire residents of the FCT. We pray that the Lord God Almighty will comfort that to this family, the community, the church, and all of us that have come to share with this family. But above all, a reminder that just as we are gathered here, remembering our daddy who has gone to be with the Lord, someday also people will gather to remember us. May I conclude by saying, may we be remembered for good in Jesus' name. Thank you, Pastor. I can't share my thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise he the Lord. We will now invite his Excellency, the former Senate President, to please come and say a word. I've been told. Thank you. After that, the distinguished Senator, Philip Aduda, will please come forward. Thank you. Praise the Lord. didn't have the honor, opportunity to spend time and get to know Baba. But I had the honor, the privilege to work closely with Baba's children. And I think from my own opportunity, I can see that Baba lived a good life. As I said, it is a legacy, and that legacy are the children. And that legacy is the kind of attendance we see here, where people have come to be with the family. We celebrate his life, and we pray for the family, I do the family. I'll continue to live the great name of Baba. May the God Almighty Lord be with the entire family. Thank you so much. Thank you, Excellency. We will now call the distinguished senator, Philip Aduda, to please come forward. Inviting distinguished Senator Philip Tenemo Aduda and uh, to be joined by the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the other relatives and their wives, of course, sisters and brothers, as he gives this testimony on behalf of the Aduda's family. Distinguished. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Permit me to observe all protocols. Uh, let me start by thanking God Almighty, who has made it possible for all of us to be here. And uh, to thank you all very much, to thank the Senate President, who's ably represented, and uh, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, our own dear brother, uh, former Senate President, uh, the SDF, uh, the both ministers, Mr. Planning and uh, Minister of State, uh, distinguished senators, uh, House of Rep members, in no particular order of protocol, permanent secretaries, and uh, all the well wishes and ambassadors who are here, and uh, the various well wishes who are here with us to pray with us and to 
condole us on this uh, trying moment. Uh, let me say that Baba lived a fulfilled life because he saw all of us grow. And uh, by the special grace of God, we're all intact here, non missing. So we're the one burying him. And uh, by his grace, we're all standing here. The Lord God Almighty has been faithful and been kind to us. Uh, they set us up on the pedestal of, uh, I will say, success and prosperity where we're given chance to excel in our various chosen careers, in our various thoughts, like you can see today. Uh, for me, I became a counselor at about 26, 27. I was already married, and uh, uh, and uh, by the time I was 32, I was a member of House of Reps. And uh, going to 41, I was a member of the Nigerian Senate, a member of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Uh, Gabriel, as PAMSEC, became PAMSEC at the very young age of 46 the youngest PAMSEC in the Federal Republic of Nigeria at the time, and uh, uh, today you can best imagine what his age is, and uh, my sisters as well, and my junior brothers. We grew up in a family where we were loved, and we loved each other. And one thing was certain for all of us, that what you cannot tell Baba or Mama and you cannot tell your siblings, then you don't do it. Because it then means it's something that is not good. And so, we were so open with each other that if we had a birthday party and were invited, we'll say it as it is and say where we're going to. So that if they are looking for you, they will know where to find you. So that you're not missing anywhere. And if you had friends coming in, you would tell them which kind of friends are coming in. So that when they see you misbehave, they know where to attack and what to do. And so, it was a very wonderful, fantastic family all put together. And so, we want to thank God Almighty for giving us Baba and for our path crossing each other. And for being the source to have brought us to this world and where we are today. We cannot but continue to give praise and thanks to the Lord for what he has done in our lives. We, of course, will miss Baba. We will miss his wife's husband. Thoughtfulness. We will miss his strict discipline because he was a very, very strict disciplinarian. But what can we do? It is the Lord that gives and it is him that takes and since he has decided to call him back home, there's nothing we can do but to thank God Almighty. We have had our various testimonies. If we were to say it today, we will not live here. But I remember that I had spoken to our sister here, Grace, and I said to her, and I, I was trying to get her on 15th, and I couldn't reach her. And uh, I sent her a text, and she replied me by 2.15 a.m and said, I saw your missed calls, are you still awake? And I said, yes, and I called her at 2.15, 2.30. And when he heard my voice, he said he would like to speak with me. And I said to her, no, let him sleep, I'll talk to him later. She said, no. But that was one, that was really something. What he said was filled up with praises for all of us, praying for all of us, and blessing all of us. And by the next day that I was supposed to go and see him, our sister had called Grace to say, Grace had called me to say, look, uh, it's getting worse and it's getting terrible. And uh, from then on, we started running around until he gave up. But certainly, someday we'll meet at the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ, where we'll meet to part no more. But sincerely, I want to seize this opportunity and use this opportunity to thank Nigerians, to thank everybody who has shared in our grief, who has 
come to us, who has identified with us, it has been very, very, and extremely overwhelming. But we thank you very much. May God Almighty guide all of us. May he grant us our heart desires. May he also meet us at the point of our needs and take us back to our various destinations safe once we finish. But let me say that, honestly, I wish that everybody could say his experience, one after the other, from the uh, boys to the girls and to the wives and to the grandchildren and then to the great-grandchildren. But time will not permit me. But I hope that we will share and will hold those wonderful memories of Baba Aduda that we had while growing up. It will not be easy. Days will come, will pass. Months will come, will pass. Those memories that we had with him, someday we'll just sit down and think about them and laugh over them. And your child or your grandchild will wonder what you're laughing at. And you will not see, you will not see anything but remember those days that he used to spank us real good to correct us and teach us the ways within which to grow in this life. I thank you very much and pray God to guide us. I really lack words to, to myself. Thank you and God bless all of us. We can do better with that round of applause. What Baba Aduda did is that he put up a football team and then in this football team we have enough substitutes and you can also see that even growing behind them are new team members of the Aduda football team. Can we please put our hands together one more time for all of them. Thank you very, very much. Whilst the service was going on, some of our very um, senior dignitaries and top-notch government officials arrived these arena and it is only pertinent to begin to recognize them but please would like to plead for your kind understanding that these recognitions are coming in no particular order so we don't run into trouble whilst the service was on we received in our midst the president of the Eight Senate, Chairman of the National Assembly, His Excellency, Distinguished Senator Bukola Seraki, C-O-N. I'd like us to please welcome him with a resounding applause. We're celebrating live, so please keep the applause coming. Just as we wait for these introductions to continue, may I just mention that the number four citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria also walked in here whilst the service was on. His Excellency, Right Honorable Femi Bajabiamila, the Speaker of the House of Representatives. A round of applause for him, please. We'll, we'll keep these recognitions at bay for the time being as we invite one of our officiating of, uh, uh, clergies, the Right Reverend Marcos Dogo, the Bishop of Kafanchan Diocese, as he comes for he is going to speak on behalf of the entire church. I'd like us to please applaud him as he comes to the podium, please. Praise the Lord. I will not attempt any team protocol. It will be easier for me to line up the, Bible, the books of the Bible than to jump into protocol because I will just be insulting myself. So I'm coming forth from the Church of Nigeria and we want to sincerely bring condolence to the Baba Aduda's family and to all of you who are here this evening. Uh, speaking from the church, I know Baba very, very well. Very, very well, more on a personal ground. When I became a bishop in the Church of Nigeria some 10 years ago, he expressed some kind of likeness of me and that brought me very close to him. Uh, Baba started as a military, and he was serving in the military chaplaincy corps until the church called him to be a bishop and to pioneer the diocese of Taraba, or the diocese of Jalingo. He was the first bishop of Jalingo. And having worked in Jalingo for quite some time, and the time came that 
a diocese is needed in Guagulada, the church also find it right to just ask him to leave Jamlingo and come back to Guagulada, being somebody from the locality. And Baba came and again pioneered the work in Guagulada. Starting a diocese is a very difficult task, very, very difficult. Baba has put a lot in the church and has done his best. I remember becoming very close to him. One time he called me and he said, he'll be doing some anniversaries. And he wanted me to come and take a program all through the anniversaries. And I did. And after that, he took me to his house and to the room and gave me a gift, which I cherished so much and I kept in the chess box. Not long after Baba retired, and when Baba retires, he now called me and said that he will be ready to take in any program I want him to do in my diocese. I knew very well that he's just beginning to be sick for no he's used to doing. So he's looking for places to go here and there. I said, Baba, you have retired. He said, hey, no, I can't do anything. He started inviting me. Well, on behalf of the Church of Nigeria, and the primate of the Church of Nigeria, who is not here because he's out of the country. We bring greetings to the Adudas family and to all of us who are here. And we pray that God Almighty will consult us and comfort us by the comforting of his spirit in Jesus' name. One thing I want to remind you, it has been read, it has been said, that the dead will rise again. The dead will rise again. Whether Christian or not Christian or whatever religion or whatever tradition, all of us will die. And after we die, all of us will rise again. I pray that we rise up to life eternal in Jesus' name. Once again, on behalf of the Primary Church of Nigeria, we bring greetings to you and God bless you all. Thank you. We'll run through these recognitions very quickly. We recognize the presence of the President of the Senate and Chairman of the National Assembly, represented here by the Deputy Leader of the Senate, Distinguished Senator Robert Ajayi Borofis. We welcome you. We also welcome the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa. We welcome you. We welcome Your Excellency, um, right Honorable Femi Bajabia Amila, having recognized you already, we welcome you. We recognize the presence of distinguished Senator Clifford Odia, Senator Efiong Bob, Senator Bidois Yaro, Senator Solomon Ewuga, Senator Francis Fadaosi, Senator Kola Balogun, Senator Matthew Urogide, Senator Efiong Bob, Senator Dino Melai, Senator Theodore Oji Ochendo, Senator Francis Alimi Hena, here of Wano Kingdom, Senator Barista Babajide Omoware, Special Assistant to the President of National Assembly, Senate Liaison, Senator Degi Bayo Barakuma, Senator Bolus Amos, and we also have with us Senator Ali Ndume, Senator Jika Dahiru, um, Senator Michael Okumidele, Senator Chukuka Utazi. We welcome you. We welcome honorable members of the House of Representatives. And I said in no particular order that these recognitions are being done. We recognize Honorable Gaza Jonathan Guerfi. Senator I.D. Gyang is also here. Honorable Bagos Musa Dachung and your wife. Honorable John Bulu Shakarau. Honorable Timothy Golu. Honorable Mukhtar. Honorable Baba Agaye. We also recognize Professor Jerry Ghana, former Minister of Information, and his lovely wife. We welcome you, uh, Bishop John Praise of the Dominion Chapel and Vice President PFN. We welcome uh, Reverend Biodun Fatoimbo, Senior Pastor Koza, and Pastor Isaac Abioye and his wife from the Living Faith Church, Pastor Jerry Eze of Streams of Joy International New Season Prophetic Prayers. Prince Clem Agba is the Honorable Minister of State Finance, Budget, and National Planning. Ambassador Zubeiru Dada, Your Excellency Minister of State, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Honorable Tunde Akogun, former Leader, House of Representatives. Honorable Mrs. J.J. Idachaba. And of course, we also recognize the presence of um, Senate Honorable Blessing Onyeche Ono, 
Honorable Princess Miriam Onoha, Honorable Soko Dabo, and we also recognize the presence of Dr. Morris Namdi Mbairi, PAMSEC GSO Office of the SGF. We also recognize Dr. Ngozi Ongudiwe, Permanent Secretary, Service Welfare Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation. We welcome you. Senator Emmanuel Buacha is the Deputy Minority Leader of the Senate. We welcome you. We'll keep the recognitions coming. My colleague has a few other names to be recognized. Um, this recognition will further explain how and the process of Baba uh, seeing the array of dignitaries we have. We also have um, Honorable Micah Jiba, the House of Rep member, Amak uh, The Chairman of Buari is here. Honorable John Gabaya. Honorable Dalla, the Chair, is the Chairman of uh, Kuali Area Council. Uh, Reverend Jonathan Samson is Can Chairman. Bishop Mike is the Can Secretary. High Excellency Ambassador A. Egba, PhD, is the Permanent Secretary Prime Minister of Special Duty and Intergovernmental Affairs. All the Yoruba Obas and the traditional rulers of the FCT, uh, Dr. Ngozi Umudiwe, the Palm Secretary, Permanent Secretary Service Welfare Office. Uh, Ibeni Roberts is a Permanent Secretary, uh, Special Duty Office of the Head of Service. Dr. Lazarus Gaza MNI, or Abusol de Zaka, the Party Chairman of FCT. Didi Watson Jack is a permanent secretary, water resources. Senator um, Solomon Ewuga, Honorable Makonjola, Right Honorable Tunde Okogu, and wife is a formal house leader, is also right here. Honorable Mrs. JJ, Honorable Mrs. JJ Adachaba, Senator Ita Idoko, Honorable Dave Martins, and P.S. Williams. We also have Senator Obina Ogba and Senator Smart Adeyemi. Also have Senator, Senator Ahmed Baba Keita, Senator Suleiman Adokwe, and the list keep going on. But then we just can't stop it, but uh, to stop it for now as we continue with the event. I'd like to. Just before we move on, please permit me to recognize that Alhaji Jamilu is here representing Al Haji Aliko Dangote GCO and President Aliko Dangote Group of Companies. And of course, we have an entertainer here who just not only entertain but leads our souls and, of course, praise sings to Almighty God, Solomon Lange. Please, a round of applause for him, please. We're going to move on right now without much ado with the tributes. Very quickly, we'll go on with the tributes, and uh, we have our father here, a wonderful man that has mentored many people, uh, sometimes unknown to him. Professor Jerry Ghana will lead the pack uh, to give us a tribute uh, on Baba. Please, can we give him a resounding round of applause as he comes up? And uh, the organizer have insisted that we do three minutes for the tribute each, please. Thank you. Excellency, the former Senate President, Your Excellency, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, very distinguished Senators, honorable members of the House of Representatives, Your Excellency, the Ambassadors, the entire Duda family, the officiating ministers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I feel honored to be asked to say a few words in honor of a very close family friend, Bishop Tanimu Samari Aduda lived a full life of love for God, tremendous care for humanity. He was somebody who took his job very seriously and uh, therefore preached the gospel, loved the gospel, celebrated the gospel, and accepted in the gospel. And therefore, we know that he's going to rise again joyfully in the gospel. We are delighted to have such a wonderful gathering here as a testimony to the kind of family he raised. Children that really have uh, come to be a great honor and delight. We are very, very happy as a family to be 
has been honored by him and his wife. When we came into Abuja, we first met in Zaria during his posting to Army Depot in uh, Zaria. Then I was a lecturer at Amadou Bello University. We came from there, the friendship grew until we moved into Abuja and we became very close family friends. My wife and I feel very honored that he gave us the opportunity of uh, leading very prominent lives in the lives of two of his uh, sons, Senator Philip Aduda, whom he gave me to really go in the way of politics. So I'm delighted that um, Senator Philip politics, <laughs> and you have done much better than your father. <laughs> Kindly join me. Put your hands together for Philip Aduda. You're doing very, very well, selling the House of Rep, now in the Senate, and uh, doing very well. The second person that uh, he and the wife gave us to also play a very vital role was uh, a very brilliant son, Gabriel Aduda, who we had the honor of uh, nominating to serve as a youth in the ICPC when it was established. He rose very, very well to work in other agencies and is now a distinguished permanent secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We are very, very proud of uh, these achievements. Gabriel is doing very well wherever I go and I'm told that uh, Gabriel is my son. I say, yes, he's my son. Kindly join me, put your hands together again for Gabriel. He's uh, doing very, very well. Baba is extremely happy with you. I want to thank Senator Philip Aduda for letting me know when Baba was sick so that I was able to visit him and pray with him in hospital. Baba has gone to be with the Lord. He served the Lord. He died in the Lord. He shall rise in the Lord. And therefore, we thank you immensely for this great honor you've done this family. This is a huge family. We know you will continue to pray for them, and they will continue to be together because we all love them and the Lord loves them more. Let me again, on behalf of the family, thank all of you for finding the time to be here today. The Lord bless you richly in Jesus' name. Thank you. A resounding round of applause once again. Because of time, we're going to plead with every other speaker that will be invited here to please, as a matter of urgency, just spend two minutes. And please keep protocol so we can move on with the speed of light. We'd like to recognize the presence of the representative of the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemio Shimbajo, S-A-N-G-C-O-N, Vice President, represented by the chaplain, Aso Villa Chapel. We want to welcome you. Please put your hands together for him. Thank you for coming. Architect Sonny Echono is PAMSEC Education and President, Institute of Chartered Architects of Nigeria. Senator Gashon Bassi has been here all evening. Senator Olamile Consolomon Adeola is here. We'd like to welcome you, Right Honorable Tunde Akogu. I've also recognized Mrs. Oyinka Oyofo, wife of Senator Oyofo, you're welcome. Mrs. Augustina Idachaba, we've recognized you already. Thank you for coming. And of course, Sir Mosu Ibe, we welcome you, Bowan of Abuja. Thank you for coming and members of your entourage. Moving on with the tributes at this point in time, we'd like to, without much ado, invite very quickly the Minister of State. Oh, Federal, um, I'll call the Permanent Secretary first. Permanent Secretary Williams Allo, to please come forward and speak on behalf of all the Permanent Secretaries to be followed by the um, Honorable Minister of State, Honorable Minister of State, um, Minister of Foreign Affairs will speak on behalf of all the ministers. And we are expecting that you just spend two minutes as you come here when we invite you over. Please, in the meantime, let's please welcome the PAMSEC Williams Allo. If you intend to make it a clap, we're celebrating live here. Let's please give him a resounding applause. All protocols duly observed. We are here to celebrate a man that is known to have fulfilled all the things that are expected of him in life. A man who gave his life to God. A man 
that has been richly blessed. We are here to celebrate him. We are not really mourning because from the testimonies that are bound here, we are sure that our Baba, our Father, and the Father of our colleague, Baba Aduda, is already in heaven. He has done well here on earth, and we pray that one day we will meet him in heaven. On behalf of the body of permanent secretaries, I tell my colleague, we earlier told him, this is not a barrier for crying. There is no need for crying. We are here to celebrate and we will continue to celebrate him. Thank you and may God bless all of us. Thank you very much. Please put your hands together for him as I invite the Honorable Minister of State, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Zubairo Dada to please come over and speak on behalf of all the ministers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Please take two minutes, sir. We plead with you. Thank you, Fire. I will take only one. Um, let me say that which I know best, and that is speaking on behalf of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, of which Gabriel, one of the sons, is part of. And that is to say on behalf of my colleague, who unfortunately is uh, inevitably, I mean, he's unavoidably, unavoidably absent because he's away on official duty. You know, that is the Minister of Foreign Affairs and all the staff of the ministry. And on my own behalf, extend our sincere condolences. Though it has been said that we shouldn't be condoling you, that we should be celebrating uh, the passing away of our father who has lived a fulfilled life. And this hall is a clear testimony of the fact that he certainly must have lived a very, very fulfilled life. So on behalf of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we rejoice with you and continue to pray almighty God to give Father, half of all the ministers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, we, we extend our sincere condolences to all, I mean, to the family and join you and share, I mean, with you the grief of the passing on of Papa. But of course, like uh, it has been said, we also celebrate a life well lived. Please take heart and continue to leave the examples that Baba left behind. And I have no doubt you can never get it wrong. All the best. Please, let's clap while he stick to the time. And then the, while this was going on, Senator Godia Kwashiki, uh, Bristin, and also Senator Chris Ngigi, the Minister of Labor. Right now, we're going on to bring up the number four city. Please join me, ladies and gentlemen, as we welcome the number four citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Right Honorable Femi Bajabia Mila, to speak on behalf of all honorable members of uh, the House. Philip, uh, obviously a reflection of the father who he had. It is often said that uh, some people live long, some people live long, but not well. Some people live well, but not long. Very rarely do you find a man who is blessed, or a woman who is blessed by God, to live both long and well. And Baba lived both long and well. I believe that wherever he is now, he looks upon this hall, happy, smiling, looking at the many testimonies or listening to the many testimonies that are bound in this hall today. My prayer is that his soul will continue to rest in peace and that Philip and his brother and other siblings will surpass even that which Baba did. Thank you. I feel privileged to be here today to speak about Lawan. And I'm also wearing my own cap. So I'm speaking on behalf of the Senate President and my distinguished, uh, distinguished colleagues 
who uh, are here and those who are not here. Uh, I think what we are doing today is celebrating of life because Baba has just moved from mortality to immortality. He has lived a good life. Jesus Christ in the Bible says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. This is in a spiritual sense. I didn't have the opportunity to meet Baba during his lifetime. But I also believe that if you have seen Gabriel, if you have seen Philip, you have seen Baba. In terms of integrity, honor, humility, and transparency. I've had the opportunity to work with Philip uh, in the leadership of Senate, and I also worked with Gabriel when we were working on a bill on chemical uh, weapons. I travel together, and I can see in them that they are good fruits of Baba. The, what I can say is that the line has fallen into you in very good places, and you have a pleasant uh, heritage. I extend the condolence of the President of Senate to you, and I pray that the good legacy which Papa has left behind, you will continue to extend it and elaborate on it. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you very much, sir. Senator Robert Ajayibar of his speaking on behalf of the President of the Senate and Chairman of the National Assembly. And at this point, I recognize you, Senator Francis Fadaonsi, Honorable Theophilus Dakashan, North Central PDP Zonal Chairman, Engineer Dr. Sam Uotu, Chairman Kugi State, Honorable Musa Amadu, former member House of Representatives, respectively. At this point, craving on your indulgence and your kind understanding, we'd like to bring forth the representative of the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshimbaje, represented here by the chaplain of the Villa Chapel. I'd like us to please welcome him with a resounding applause as he speaks on behalf of the VP. Praise the Lord. Your Excellencies and very distinguished um, BVIPs here <clears throat> and the family of the Adudas, I'm here first to apologize on behalf of His Excellency for his inability to uh, be here because, he, like I informed Senator Aduda, it was just impossible for him to make it. However, he said I should express the condolences of both his wife, Dolapo, and himself, uh, their, their excellencies, that um, they wish the family um, the grace to be able to bear this loss and to be able to take comfort and solace in the fact that uh, the departed father served the Lord as a very great icon. And he said, I should particularly remind you of this scripture in the book of First Thessalonians. And that's why I believe we are celebrating his life and not just the loss. The Bible says in the book of First Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Our father is asleep. In Christendom, we don't die, we sleep. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep, including our father, Jesus will also bring with him to life. And so, I believe that the Lord will comfort the family with these words in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. You'll also agree with me that um, the reason why we didn't invite back the president of the seven, uh, eighth Senate to come back is because he was called, almost breaching the protocol. But please bear with us, uh, Your Excellency Senator Dr. Bukola Sarakisio, and please bear with us. We have come to the end of the tributes and we hand over proceedings to the church. Please, a round of applause for them.
Thank you once again for your patience. We move to page 10 now, item 14. We shall stand while we sing this hymn. Let's kindly stand. Stanza three, please. Stanza three. Reverend Jonathan Bamayi, the Bishop of Kassina, will be bringing the word to us. Thank you, my Lord. Shall we pray? Our internal God and our Father in heaven, we are so grateful to you for opportunity to gather us together this time and this moment. Lord, we ask that as we bring your word, let there be healing, let there be restoration, let there be connection. Lord, I pray that as our hearts are heavy, we know in you there is peace. Let there be peace in this place. In the name of Jesus Christ. Pray that as you open your scripture, Lord, speak to us in the language we understand. And at the end of all things said and done, may your only name and your name alone be glorified. And we be blessed by you. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. I want to quickly give thanks to God for opportunity given us to come here and for safety in travels. I was just battling within myself. I said, if personal testimony is one hour, and then uh, the word of God, which is a big testimony, will be maybe two hours. Uh, but I have to really be time conscious so that we can move on. And I pray with the organizers, since they have given my brothers from Living Faith and Koza one minute, maybe they'll give me three long minutes. I think the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I want to thank the primate, on whose instant I'm actually standing here. Without him accepting me to be here, I wouldn't be here. I want to thank him, though he's not here, and to thank him for permitting me to be here. I want to also thank my brothers, the bishops that are here, Kubwa, Kavan Chan, and as well as Gogwalada and Zakibiam. Thank you for being here together. My deepest feelings to the family of Aduda. Uh, I want to thank God for their understanding and for their patience on the things that has happened around them. Let me say this as appreciation to you. When we lost Mama, one of the things that I'm thanking you and also sympathizing with you is that Baba called me and said to me, Baba, may you come? 
when I die, this is where I want you to be able to bury me. I'm thanking you because you've done what Baba said to you. And I'm happy. I'm so grateful for that because I was just thinking, where will you bury Baba? But to God be the glory. You accepted his will and you are doing that. I thank you very much. And the Lord will come to with us and grant us a heart to bear the loss in Jesus' name. I want to thank and also feel with the people that have come from far and near, Baba associates and colleagues in the military and also the church. I pray that the Lord will comfort us all in the name of Jesus Christ. I actually had prayed that this cup should pass over me, but it was very difficult. I pray and I asked the person who called me, I said, Bami, you have to preach today because Baba Aduda was your father. I said, there were those who know Baba more than me. You talk of the former prime mate, uh, Akiola, Baba Oko, they know Baba more than me. And I said to him, he said, no, you have to preach. I said, well, Baba served in Jalingo and serving in let them preach. But he said, no, you came out from Baba, so you have no excuse not to preach. So the cup has to stay on my side. And I pray that the Lord will grant us the reason why I have to talk to you today in the name of Jesus Christ. I was, my nervousness of not desiring to preach today, we are two things. One, I am a bit emotional. I, I try to run away from not even seeing any of Baba's children. But unfortunately to me, when I step into this place, the first person I saw was the person who looked like Baba, Daddy Boy. I said, what will I do now? You know, I, I thank God he climbed up, he didn't see me. But when I came in, I saw Narai. I couldn't hold my tears, I saw Auntie, you know, but I just pray the Lord grant me grace in Jesus' name. Because I was so close to Baba in a sense that as a bishop and as his son, Baba called me and talked so much to me. Number two, why I was insisting not to pray, to say a word or preach today is that where will I start about Baba's life? Maybe the organizer will say they give me two minutes or three minutes to go and sit down. And this is a man who has stayed, I stayed with him, I know him for more than 20 years. And that was, these were the two things. And other things, I struggle that I will not have reason to come here. But the joy is that for whatever happens, God has a reason of allowing that to happen at this point. Before I read the text I have for you and for us to preach, because my desire, my thanks is that if it is just a testimony of my life and Baba, I will share with you, I will just go and sit, that will be fine. But before I read the text, I asked some three, I mean different people to say something about Baba. Briefly, one of them said, for Baba, I know he was the most humble man I have ever met. Passionate for royal evangelism. No matter how difficult and how rugged the place is, Baba will go with you. He said, Baba is a giver to the poor, and indeed, it's a general giver to everybody he comes around. That's number one. Number two, he said to me, what I know about Baba is that Baba is a role model. It might, it might see a kind of a character of humility which he has never seen. Baba is a patient person, a forgiven person. And he concluded and said, Baba was a hardworking man, a cheerful and a peace loving person. The third person said to me, Bishop, I don't, want to, I don't know what to say about Baba, but let me say this. Baba was a father to the core, a loving and a caring father to all, a counselor, an excellent man, an extra, extravagant giver to all the meets along himself. He said he was a burden bearer. And he concluded and said, Baba indeed was more than he can describe. This was through three testimony I received. Let me read a portion before I read my own final testimony before I close. Let's read Matthew chapter 25. I'm going to read verse 13. I'll just take a few verses there, but we can go and read on and on. Verse 14, 15, and 16. It says, For a kingdom of God. Verse 14, sorry. For the kingdom of, God, of heaven is as a man traveling for into a far country who came his own servant and called his own servant and delivered unto them his goods. And to one he gave them ten talents, the five talents, to another two talents, to another one, to every man according to the several ability and straight away he took onto his journey. Verse 16, I want to stop there. And he had, and he that had received five, talents, went and traded with it as make same and also make five. 
own and own the two, the same. The last one, do not trade with it. I want to discuss briefly with you by the question that says, remember there is a reward. Remember there is a reward. It is true that in all situations we find ourselves, we should give thanksgiving to God. Philippians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. And also, it is being said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, that we should not cry like the unbelievers or be ignorant as those who do not know Christ. I am so concerned about the chapter I read. Matthew 25, verse 14, 15. If you go to down 31, you will realize here is a story of a parable. A man has traveled far distant, far country. To me alone, the people may be thinking that the man may not come back quickly. Let him do what he wants to do. And indeed, he traveled. But suddenly, he came back. Friends, there will be one day. Remember, there's going to be a reward. The man suddenly came back. I don't have the time to go into details on it. He came back and called them for settlement. And said, you bring your report. You bring your report. You bring your report. The last man said a very nasty word that was not supposed to be said. But the first one made profit, the second one made profit. I said, you remember there's going to be a reward. And he gave them all. He said, this man, because you've done this, I bless you, I bless you. Church of God, I am bringing this to rest because we have, have been aware that God says he's coming back again. And every life that is here, you are an investment that has been given to you. Some of you receive five, some of you two, some of you one. I am asking, no matter where you are coming from, what is the investment you are giving? You are doing with that which God has given to you. God gave these people, the master gave these people talent. Five, two, three, one. And they went and traded. Number one made profit. Number two made profit. The last one he said, I know you are a hard man. Your life is an investment. Your life is a business. God has given you that life that he is coming back. Yes, he, some of you are 50, 60, 70. When will God come back? He will come back. And when he comes back, there will be settlement of account. Everybody will give account of what God has given to you. Your talents, your energy, your resources. You will give account of everything God has given to you. People of God, when you look at your life as investment, what have you invested in your life? Because the master is coming one day to ask you. Baba has finished his work. He's gone back. He has finished what he needs to trade with. He's gone back. He's waiting for the reward that will be given to him at the last day. Because the Bible said there will be judgment. And after judgment, reward will come. And so today we see people that are in different category in church, outside the church, in society. They use their lives in doing things that they feel they want to do on their own. They never could remember they are the owner of the life they are living. Everyone sitting here, somebody own your life, and your life is an investment. You will give account of the life you live in here now. We see people are talking as if their life belongs to them in society, in church. There is pride. You hear people talking as if they own their own life. Friends, I'm telling you, you do not own the world, you do not own your life. Somebody own your life, and you give account of your life one day. If you are, Leading a people, remember that those people you are living, leading, you will give account of them what God gave you to lead them one day. If you have been given, deposited something as a treasure in your life, and you are using it for your own personal sake, you will give account of those things God has given to you one day. I see people cheating, lying, arrogance in, in everywhere, in society, in church. I am this, I am that. You are nobody. God has put something in you that he requires you one day to give account of that thing he has given to you. Is it resources God has given to you to take care of others so that you give account of those resources? Is it lives God has given to you as pastors? You give account of those lives God has given to you on the last day. These people, three of them, we are giving gifts and they we are called friends, uh, fathers and mothers in Christ. You will settle account with God one day. No matter how long you live, my joy is that it doesn't even matter how long you live, but how well do you live and how do you touch lives in wherever you live. Some of us are living in places where we are okay, but the people that are supposed to take care of them, they are suffering. God is calling us today to know that every one of us will give account of what the Lord has given you to lead. Remember, it is important that you touch lives while you are here on earth. And that's why each time I remember, I will read my testimony briefly after now. When Baba called me after his retirement, he said to me, 
in a room. He sat with me and said, he brought all his things around him. He is a Episcopal grace. He said, well, I may take anyone you want to take. And after I've taken so many things I knew to take, he brought his personal clothes and gave me this cross I'm wearing. He said it was given to him by Baba. I thought I did to lawyer. He said, because I love you as my son, he removed it and put it on my chest. What a wonderful man. And you say, I cannot cry. I should cry and leave. But I know that Baba. Church, I am, and people, I am calling your attention that the best you can do is to turn and do that which is right because one day, you will stand before the judgment throne. Because the Bible says, after judgment, the reward is coming. May I conclude to say to you, whatever location, whatever place you are, check, I've told you, your life is an investment, you are value, what is your value of your life, and how do you take care of those who are under you, and what do you do now, and what do you think to do in the future? Excuse me, if you still have more years to live, what do you think to do for yourself and others? I challenge everyone that is here. Look at your life. Look at how you are. Some people will talk. I see the whole, the whole wall. One day we leave this wall. Whether you like it or not. No matter how big, no matter how small, no matter how rich, no matter how poor you are, we will leave this wall. The best you can think is to put your treasure in heaven where your heart should be and the life you touch on earth here will speak about you. There's a song we sang I will already be remembered by what I have done. Baba is gone. But I cannot forget Baba. Because it touches my life. It touched some people's life. The final time I remember I came with him. He said, no, Baba, because I know you are my son. Because naturally in Anglican, any bishop coming out of a bishop, that bishop, you are a son to the father who has given birth to you. He took me to his retirement house where he was building. I made a building. The dice was building for him. He, he couldn't finish. He took me. In short, that was the time he went to the distinguished senator's house. He said, you have to go and see senator. He's your brother. We went there. And he took me to so many places so that he can let me know the way he loved me. It's not just here, say, with mouth. But the heart, he showed me. I must conclude. Death is not a respecter of anyone. It can come when it will come. When I called my sister, Mrs. Katara, I said, I had Baba is sick. He said, your Baba is gone. My wife is here. She will tell you how I wept profusely. And I said, I refuse to call the children. I only text Senator Philip and Honorable Gabriel. I only text them. I couldn't call them because of emotions and feelings in me. Baba is gone. I cannot talk to him. I look at this just a flash. May I remind you, death is not the end of life. Jesus overcomes sin and death. And so there's life after death. Heaven is a better place. And I know Baba is enjoying heaven. And I know in the resurrection money we shall meet again. Do you have Jesus in your life today? Do you know him? The joy I will have is that as many who are not having encounter with Jesus, you came for Baba, wake up, service of sang, and you have encounter by the master, that will be the joyous thing I will have in my life. That you have Jesus to go home with him and to live with him, that when you die, you have a place to enter. It is clearly stated in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, it said, I stand at the gate of your door and heart and knock. If anybody hears me and open his heart, I will come in and die with him and you die with me. Jesus is making a call to everyone who has not known him. It doesn't matter your position. It doesn't matter who you are. But Jesus is alive. And when you die without Jesus, there will be another death. But when you have Jesus, you will live with him. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 7, verse 12, verse 20, it says, For behold, I come quickly. My friends, I must tell you, the way we are in our country, in our world today, you can't for sure say what will happen tomorrow. Death everywhere. We need to get prepared because we will leave this place one day, one time. When I was talking to my, my bishop, the bishop, I said, please, you will just summarize and go and say, because the, the country is not living at peace. Whether the country is at peace or not, one day we shall leave this country and go somewhere. Where are you going to go? Where you don't have a place to prepare. It's a man who doesn't have a house. When you go to the market, you don't want to go back. But when you have a house, and when you go to the market, you want to go back to your house. I challenge us, of all of us, that let us get to close to the master who owns our life because our life is in the hand of God, and he controls our life. When we don't have him, we will die without him. But when we have Jesus, we will die and reign with him at the last day. May I conclude as I read this? Don't forget, remember the said word. These people collected their reward, you will also collect your reward one day. 
I had struggled to make sure that this tribute gets into the program, but I don't know what happened. And uh, I was not uh, given the opportunity, so I don't have to read it and then I pray I go to say it. My tribute is this tribute to a father like no other, Baba T.S. Adoda. It has been a very difficult holding back my tears and that of my family since the news of her demise filtered down to us. We can't imagine that Baba is gone. That is inevitable. A price that everyone must pay one day. Whether you are big, whether you are rich, whether you are poor, you will pay a price of dying one day. Baba, you worked so hard to see that I became strong like you. God used you to make me what I am today. Your love for me is unprecedented. I can't describe. You shower your blessings to me and my family. I remember the day I visited you. You showed me love and gave me everything after your retirement. And give me all that I needed to take. And say, is that all? I say, Baba, anything you feel as you take, you give me all your, also your clothes that I should take home because you love me. I like to say, I, you cherish me, you cherish my family, but yet you are going to be with the Lord. I remember, every time I, you call me, you inquire, how is the ministry in Katina? How is your wife? How is my grandchildren doing? I say to you, we, we are trusting God that you will live long to see what will become in future and to reap that which you have labored in our lives but the cool hands of death stole you out of us. Baba, you were a very hard-working person, very industrious, very disciplined, sincere and humble, and a decent person. One thing Baba hate, and I wrote it here, Baba hate any lazy person. He doesn't want a lazy person near him. Laziness was not Baba's issue. He doesn't want laziness. Baba does not want any lies around him. He was very passionate that he doesn't want to hear lies. He doesn't want a lazy person around him. Baba, you taught us how to be hardworking, to be honest, to be God-fearing, and be a, with time consciousness. Baba will never come late in any service. He was very time conscious. I must conclude. Baba, we hope and pray that your good legacies you taught us Myself and your, your, my other brothers and sisters, even though you are going to be with the Lord, we will ever remain green in our hearts and our lives. And our memory will keep remembering that which you taught us. Each day we think about you, everything will seem to look, look like it is like a flash. Baba, you are gone. I say this as I get to the end. Baba was my mentor. Baba was my father. Baba was my hero. May I say to you, according to Rick Warren, he pinned down this word. And I say to the family and to all of us that are here that are mourning and are feeling that Baba has left us. And no, Baba is with the Lord. He said, in times of, in a happy moment, praise God. That was Rick Warren. He pinned it down. In a difficult moment, seek God. In a quiet moment, worship God. In a painful moment, trust God. In every moment, thank God. That was what he pinned down. May the God of all comforts Minister his peace to all those who are gathered, particularly the media family and the entire Anglican communion. I pray, I say to God at least as I ended, God, give me the scenario to accept the things I cannot change and wisdom to change the things I can and to acknowledge and know the difference between the two. It was written by an anonymous writer. There is a difference between the thing that is right and thing. I said to Baba, adieu and good night. People of God, people that are gathered here, one day you will leave this place. One day I will leave this place. I pray that when you are gathered here and you listen to this, you will think about your life and think how to use our life. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, we are grateful. Please, can we put our hands together for the Lord? My Lord, thank you so much for that wonderful message. Uh, to step it down properly, we want to invite Solomon Lange to minister to us for about four minutes, please. Thank you. Let's please welcome Solomon Lange, award-winning gospel musician. Say, my 
My time a corner. My time a corner. My time a corner. But Sanji so roba. My time a corner. My time a corner. But Sanji queen yaba. My time a corner. 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 But Sanji to Roba. My time a corner. My time a corner. But Sanji Queen Yaba. My time a corner. 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 But Sanji to Roba. My time a corner. My time a corner. But Sanji Queen Yaba. My time a corner. My time a corner. I see grace, I see grace, I see grace, all I see is grace, I see grace, I see grace, I see grace, all I see is grace, I see grace, I see grace. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. You took my shame, you took my pain. Jesus gave me his name. Now I reign with him all my days. I'll sing his praise. Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, all I see is sees grace. Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, all I see is sees grace. I see grace. I see grace. I see grace. All I see is grace. Amazing grace is a story of my life. It's not by power, it's not by might, it's by the Spirit of the Lord. The arm of flesh will always fail, but divine help is what I enjoy. I'm not afraid. Of tomorrow, I have grace, grace. Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, all I see, all I see is grace. Everywhere that I go, everything that I do, all I see, all I see is grace. Some trusting chariots, some chosen horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord. Some trust in their schemes, others trust in their kings, but we trust in the name of the Lord. When the arm of flesh will fail them, we will still be standing tall, because we trust. In the name of the Lord. When they say there's a casting now, we will say there's a lifting up. 
Must we trust in the name of the Lord? When I was a backer, I saw in a Dominica, Narca, so I got rain. When I was a backer, but you told me, Tongue I'll hear in a Dominican, Let's jam our hands together. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. We quickly bring in to the podium the choir of Guagualada Diocese, where our late father, Bishop Baduda, was a pioneer bishop. The choir, please. Let's cheer them on the podium. As the choir members are coming up, we'd like to appreciate your presence here. Bishop Dr. Alfredo Mota, Royal Springs Church. Bishop Dr. Peter James Azaki, Prevailing Word Gospel Assembly. Bishop Dr. Sam Moses Tungua, New Covenant Revival Gospel Church. And Dr. Kevin Ike, representing FCT Minister of State. We welcome all of you. Thank you for coming. Just be a little bit patient, they are coming.
Philip, Sinetto Philip, Yes, I'm a dole, Hankory, oh, Hankory, Hankory, Gabe, Hankory, Hankory, Gabe, Hankory, Hankory, Ambassador Gabe, Hankory, Yes, I'm a dole, Hankory. B. 
bishops. Aguri. Aguri. The house of bishops. Aguri. Yes, I'm a dole. Aguri. Oh, oh. Aguri. Aguri. Adodas. Aguri. Aguri. The family of Dodas. Aguri. Yes, I'm a dole. Aguri. Oh, oh. Aguri. Aguri. Hungry, Friends, Friends and wishes, Yes, I'm a dole, Oh, Baba, Baba, Meritus, Baba, Aduda is gone. Baba, Baba, Meritus, Baba, Aduda is gone. Can we put our hands together for the choir? That is Guagualada Dalsisan Choir. If you did not take any other thing, at least I took her. And so please take note of that. Take heart. We want to invite the entire family of Aduda to come out for prayer. And we have the pleasure to invite the Right Reverend Jisrael Vander, Bishop of Zakibian Diocese, to pray for the family. Family members, please. The family members to come forward for prayer. Distinguished Senator Philip, let's come forward. Lead the family forward for prayer. Senator Philip Aduda to lead the entire members of the Aduda's family to please come forward for the prayers. Whilst they are making their way here, we welcome the minority leader of uh, the Senate, distinguished Senator Enyin Naya Hakot Abaribe. We welcome you, sir. Let us Immortal, invisible, the almighty and ever living and ever present God. We thank you for the life of our late father who has gone to rest. We appreciate you. We thank you so much, O King of Glory, for the family he has left behind. O God of heaven and earth, we pray for them. You will continue to comfort them. In the exit of our Father, we pray there will be no division in the family. You will unite them. You will keep them strong. You will give them grace to bear the feeling of each other in the name of Jesus Christ. Our God and our Father, we pray for understanding among them. And we pray that the legacies that Baba has left behind, they will continue and even surpass it to the glory and honor of your name. Most importantly, Baba died in the faith, 
we pray they will continue in this faith in the name of Jesus Christ. Our God and our Father, we pray you will build your head around them. You will defend them from all evil. We pray in particular, O King of Glory, for the head of the family at this time. He need your wisdom. He need grace, O King of Glory, to lead those behind him. Help him in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, our God and our Father, because we know that which we have asked of you, you will do for us. More than we have even asked that your name will be glorified and that joy will be ours. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Thank you very much, my Lord. Uh, the next item is item 19 on page 12, offering. And we invite the choir to lead us in a session of praise while the ushers will help us to quickly collect the offering. Let's do that to the glory of God. Drum power. Yes. What shall we say unto the Lord? All I have to say is thank you, Lord. Hi. Praise. What shall we say unto the Lord? Say. All I have to say. Because we, this is a church service, please drop your offerings in the bags that the ushers are coming round with. The church service is not over yet. Please tarry with us a while. Thank you very much. Please tarry with us a while. Thank you. Frenzy. We'd like to thank the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. We'd like to thank the Secretary to the Government of the Federation leading all the ministers and heads of agencies of government to these service of songs. Mr. Boss Mustafa, we appreciate you, sir. Thank you very much. Frenzy, say, oh yeah, Let me also, at this juncture, welcome and recognize the presence of the Honorable Chief Commissioner, Public Complaints Commission, Honorable Abim Bola Yusuf, and members of your entourage and other commissioners of the Public Commission, Oyo, Kogi, and uh, FCT that have been with you. 
We welcome you. Thank you very much. Frenzy. The oh, offering yeah. is going on. Please hey. drop your offering oh, yeah. in the basket. Oh, yeah. forward let us pray our gracious heavenly father we thank you for the opportunity we give. thank you for your blessings thank you for what you have done in the life of our father aduda whom you have called to be with you father we pray you accept our thanksgiving in the mighty name of jesus christ thank you heavenly father in jesus glorious name we pray. Please pass the offering bags all to the altar. God bless you. At this point, we want to invite uh, His Excellency Ambassador Gabriel Aduda, the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, to come forward to give a vote of thanks on behalf of the family. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, we can safely uh, keep the protocol that short. We want to say a very, very big thank you as a family. The Adidas are very, very grateful for what has happened here today, starting right from the team of the clergy. We cannot thank you enough. School of Bishops and all pastors here present, we want to say a very big thank you. All government officials that came, the management of the ministry, the uh, leadership and management of the National Assembly, ladies and gentlemen, even gentlemen of the press and the photographers, what could we do without you? Thank you all so very much. I want to thank everyone that has worked in one way or the other to make this a success, including the event planners, those that helped with... Hospital, St. Peter's Anglican Church, Taru, behind Primus Hospital. The time is 10 a.m. on the dot. Please, we expect to see every one of you there. Thank you once again for coming. We invite right now our host, the Right Reverend Duke Akamisoko, Bishop of Kubua, Diocese to give us the closing prayer and benediction. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, finally, I shall bring this meeting to the Lord. So go. Covenant. He kept you with everything good. That you might do his good will, working in you, <laughs> to whom be glory forever and ever.
closing hymn is item 23 abide with me fast falls the even tide we shall stand as we take that St. Peter's Anglican Church, Karu, directly behind Primus Hospital. Wish you all a happy night rest. Ballot. Thank you. Thank you very much. A few announcements. In addition to the announcement of the church service, by God's grace, the family will be at the mortuary by 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, the family will be at the mortuary and the church service, just as you've heard, is at 10 a.m. at St. Peter's Anglican Church, sure. Old Carew. Interment follows immediately at the family compound. Shalom. Turn us up. Okay, I said the family, the body leaves. Our daddy's body leaves the mortuary by 8 a.m. to the church. And so church service is at 10. And then we also have um, the members of the planning committee, all members of the planning committee to please wait behind immediately after this service of songs. All members of the planning committee to please wait behind. And then the traffic direction tomorrow. Those of you coming from Abuja Metropolis, Gwagwalada, Zuba, Nyanya.